Yeah, we go from Sniffly Joe to Awake Joe, because this is months later. Welcome to Smack Up. Whoa. We're back, Hello. baby. Wait, where am I? Oh, my God. Hey, look, dude. Joe Welcome to the new crew, existence. new year. Hey, that's the same year, but, you know, I'm married now, so we got to switch it up everybody a Everybody snap and clap. Please clap. Yeah. Please clap. Patreons, Hello? Hello? you will see the Tyler's Wedding star rating and review. Huh? From the You Don't Have to Do This Podcast Network on Patreon. Huh? Check it out. Hey. Uh, Patreon. The soundboard's back for the time being. Until we go too wild, huh? Only only for Smack Up. Did, did oh, anybody yeah. upload the one we were talking about earlier, or did that not happen? I don't think so yet, no. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Man, March 3rd. Crazy, huh? Actual good episode of SmackDown. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, There's really no good. Figure, huh? One of the best. I love it. We should send this episode to Tony Khan. And they this is how you do it. it. This episode would scare Tony Khan because the, 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 we're entering the punk verse in this episode, bro. But, no, no, well, no, 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 no. Oh, my. I preface this by saying CM Punk sucks. The cum punk verse is here, boys. Get ready. Kurt Angle in this opening promo here, the fucking, not opening promo, but, you know, this video package that we got with the terrible graphics of him and Undertaker that they keep using for yes. some reason. The heavy they love these graphics so much. Kurt, oh. Kurt drops to the best in the world, bro. Yeah, I don't know what's been <laughs> up with uh, the promos. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, 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 f- we were filming two today, so we had to watch two separate episodes, but for some reason they love to overdub these promos now. They're like, hey, remember Booker T getting really out of breath during the match? And so they have some dude going. <sighs> it's like in a video <sighs> game when you run too much. I will I will put it in this. You will hear it right now. You'll hear it over <laughs> whatever I just did. So you can. That was not me. That was the. That was the that was the show. Oh, my. Oh, Kurt. Kurt, why are you breathing? Somebody it's, get this man a bottle of milk. Why won't he stop somebody, breathing? I'm going to get this man a bed. Episode. <laughs> And that leads into a match. They didn't even have an opening promo. They're just like, can you dig it, sucker? Sucker. They two only mention Booker T at first, right? Like, we don't even know who he's facing until the person's coming out. But yeah. yeah, it was a shell shock because you guys mm-hmm. told me that uh, his opponent... You guys told me that his opponent had come back at No Way Out, and I didn't... Re- I, the Royal Rumble, actually. I, I mm-hmm. just forgot he existed. Booker T comes out uh, two weeks... Two weeks, right? This is two weeks after No Way Out. Yep. Yeah. After yep. having he, been defeated yeah. for the United States Championship by uh, Chris Benoit. Yeah. Uh, fucking Tatanka. I, I, I. He comes out. Starts doing his <laughs> that, what was that? No, hold on. Was That's that racist? Hold on. Was that, was that racist, uh, no. dude? <laughs> no. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. No. I think we're... <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> no, because he does it too. He did it, and I, and I, and I think he's from like Iowa or some shit. It sounds like Kawhi no, Leonard. He's he's actually Native hey. American though. Yes. Yeah. Respect to Tatanka. He he fucking he put his dick on Booker T here. He really dominated most of the match. I gotta say, like this insane. match was kind of like one thing that I noticed: just so many strikes. For yeah. some reason, very little actual like grappling chain, anything. Just strikes and rest holds most of the match. Felt very modern that way. Yeah, and like the beginning, Tatanka damn near tries to rip Booker's arm off. Yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of tomahawk chops. Booker T desperately trying to um keep distance between them. He's got those long legs for those powerful super kicks. Mm-hmm. At one point, uh Tatanka even wrangles him down to the floor uh, and gets up to the second rope for for a top rope tomahawk chop but yeah. uh booker like jumps up and hits him with i think is a is a is a drop kick to to meet him as tatanka collapses to the floor and i think at that point uh we also Charmelo's on commentary i forgot to mention that i don't think anybody else did yeah there she's on commentary and there is a lot of talking about booker t's groin yeah his penis, yeah. Well, Taz yeah, goes, yeah. how is the groin of Booker T? And Michael Cole responds, the groin looked pretty good there. <laughs> yes, I remember Charmel just yelled at Michael Cole, and Michael's like, why am I getting yelled at? Taz asked you. <laughs> Taz, now, at, Taz one point, at one point questioning Michael Cole's marriage. It's, it's, getting, it's getting wild. It's getting heated between the boys. <clears throat> at one point, Charmel demands the, uh, the District of Columbia to um 
build a monument to Booker T. And I agree, honestly. I mean, <laughs> you know, he went I, out there. He was the United States champion, after all. You know, at first I thought I thought she was going to say something based and say that we need a monument for Native Americans in D.C., but that just wasn't the case. No way, dude. Brother. <laughs> yeah, I thought that match was awesome. I don't know why, but I was super into it. Booker Maybe T because it was my point. first day back. But Booker T at one point gets put in like a chokehold, like just a, a a rear naked choke, like rest hold for a while, and then Taz is like, "Oh yeah, he's buying time. Maybe his groin is inflaming." <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think a, a little while after Tatanka just get Liz leaves him on the mat and then goes to like the far corner of the ring, and I'm just like, Tatanka, that's just too far to jump. Why are you gonna jump that far? Like you can't land that. Well, so something they mention in the beginning of this match is that Booger T and Charmel have been haunted by the Boogeyman, mm-hmm. and that comes around uh, to bite them. During- when will Mark Henry step in? Never. Yeah, Booker Booker T hits uh, his scissor kick, and Boogeyman, uh, his music appears. He's just behind Charmel and drooling all over the place. Booker T is foaming like, at the mouth. In fact, Booker Booker T was fucking pissed. He's like, "What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing?" And then Tatanka grips his uh, goes, groin. not again. Tatanka grips up his groin and rolls him up, and steals the win. His inflamed groin. Yeah, his he's inflamed a, groin. Yeah, and uh, Tatanka got the dub. I thought that was great. Three stars on my book because that shit rocked. I mean, it's fine. It was good. Uh-huh. The match itself is fine, but the fact that it's just building up the feud of, of Booker T and Boogeyman is just like, whatever, dude. And when will Mark Henry end the reign of terror of Boogeyman? Somebody needs to stop this serial sexual harasser. Well, this was not there. It's so I think true. Boogie, but... Boogeyman is definitely, he's feeling the effects of being in Washington, D.C. I think explicitly going after a woman civilian, a non-combatant, um, <laughs> is a war crime. I, uh, but Boogeyman has disregarded all all conventions of uh, of war. Listen, Geneva man, conventions have been all fucked up right now. Listen, yeah. man, he just wanted to show off his worm collection. What's wrong with that? You can't she do that should... to a non-combatant. You can't do that. Boogie, Boogeyman loves and respects the Pentagon, big time. <laughs> wow. You know who uh, loves and respects our Pentagon? Our theme Peter song, Gabriel. Peter Gabriel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's still I our biggest fan. I have it in my notes. We're 30 days from WrestleMania, from the big time. Big time. Oh, you know where WrestleMania is going to be, guys? It's going to be big this time. This year? It's going to be oh. that, that, in that shithole. Chicago. It's, in, it's in Chicago. We're the, home pal- the hometown of one CM Punk, fellas. The yeah, Punk verse is here, pal. Get ready. Well, is that the second chapter of the Punk verse? That's the second chapter. There's more though. Get ready. Chicago, and I said, "Oh my, is CM Punk gonna be in attendance?" He but will you know, be. <laughs> you know what? You know what starts this year, right? What does? One one show ECW, pal. Wait a minute. I what? also just realized because I was watching. Um, I did my homework a little bit. Sure. I watched Kurt Angle versus The Undertaker at No Way Out, and there was a guy on the hard cam wearing a Ring of Honor hoodie. Mm-hmm. Oh my I god! It. I'm telling you, there's something happening here. That was crazy. You you just activated my mind right there. <laughs> so the punk versus crazy. real, and it's starting today. We got Kurt Angle dressing up for the biggest match of his career as a uh, taping Nicole up the says. knee, pal. Yeah, he's just dressing yeah, over he there. Says, Kurt Angle. He's full of ranch. Taz and Michael Cole are really just gassing up how good the match was. Uh, Vin- and, and it was and, good. And, they love to keep showing off the Ray versus Randy feud. We got, uh, you know. There was a track playing on it that sounded like it could be from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> like the beginning. I was like, this just sounds like Final Fantasy VII. I, I know I'm the new kid on the block here, and I know you guys have discussed it at length, but the way they parade the death of Eddie Guerrero is just so unsettling. What do you mean? And, What's so bad about it, huh? <laughs> Why is it bad, yeah. Joe? Uh, I mean, keep cashing those checks, Vicky. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, Vicky. Uh, stay with that abusive yeah, new let's, husband you got. Yeah, it's all good. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. Confirm, allegedly. Confirmed this is by defamation. the nephew of dead guy Eddie Guerrero. Whoa. Nephew, dead guy. Nephew, <laughs> dead guy is crazy. <laughs> That's my wrestling name, bro. <laughs> Randy Orton 
is coming out to the ring with a new theme song, and it's CM Punk's theme of uh, <coughs> "This Fire Burns" by Kill Switch Engage. Need I was I very. Say more. I lost Need my. I say more, everyone. I lost my fucking brain because I'm like, wait, what? Huh? Why is he coming out to that? It was but weird because it comes out to this, and then well, in the whole... next episode it goes back to what is it? Burning my light? Did it? Mm-hmm. I didn't. Huh? I didn't even notice. Yeah, it. literally the next episode they switch it. But here's the Yo, thing: it goes back. I had. A... I. I... Go ahead. I had a CD when I was younger, and I had Reckless Intent, and it had this song on there, and it was listed as Randy Orton's theme. No, it's not. It's like it's his theme for one day. I know. And, and yeah, they not. were like promoting. That's what the CD is. WWE album Reckless Intent. I honestly, I didn't know what was happening. I was shell shocked. I thought Randy was coming out to Gregory Helms music. I was like, what? Oh, that's Kill Switch Engage. What the fuck? My brothers, okay. witness, bear witness to the truth. We are in the converse. Yeah. CM Punk politicked Randy Orton. Something is happening. <laughs> Something is brewing. Something and nobody knew it. <laughs> nobody was ready. Tony Khan wasn't ready when he was writing on the dirt sheet boards or on whatever fucking website he was on. We need Lord to track Kane. down Tony Khan's account. We need to find his wand boards account so bad. Oh no. <laughs> so somebody needs to do it. Why haven't you done this yet? I'm, this is me recruiting you, listener, whoever you are. <laughs> Listen here, motherfucker. You gotta go out there and you gotta find his Wanboards account so we can we can see how he felt about all this. I'll find his ASP post. If you can find Super Crazy's Wandier, you hit me up. Speaking of Super Crazy, we got Randy Orton versus Super Crazy. I don't okay. know why. Oh, you know, actually, you know what? It does make sense because Randy Orton wants to fight Luchadors to get ready for Rey Mysterio. Yeah, bro. He's just he's. But they're not gonna work. say that. Uh, Randy he's an looked Apex predator. Randy looked fucking angry when he saw Super Crazy. He's like, I cannot believe he's on the one deer. Yeah, he's like, saw red in the eyes. There seem there seemed to be some uh, some malicious intent here. I'm not gonna say what it was based on, but uh, you can you can understand what I'm implying out there. Randy just kept killing Crazy with the drop kicks. He jumped the knee like off the apron onto the floor. I don't know what the he, hell he was cooking. Yeah, he started about. the match with a thumb to the eye. Like he yeah, really he was mad. He was mean, really he was mean, really nationally motivated burn. being in the in, being he in was, the nation's he capital. Was, he Whoa. was nationally motivated. <laughs> he was nationally loaded motivated. He thumbed him in the <laughs> eye. A specific kind of way about borders. Yeah. But he's got I don't a know which he's, way. He's, regardless, he's got a picture perfect drop kick. Oh my god. It's so nice. It's always nice. Yeah. But hold on, I gotta I gotta rewind the clock a little bit here. When Super Crazy was coming out, there's a dude in the crowd holding holding up a number one Super Crazy fan sign. Like, this yes. is his moment, bro. Like, that was all for him, dude. <laughs> like, fuck it up. He was in the trenches in Philly. He expected him to be on Velocity, but he got him on SmackDown, and he just started crying as soon as he heard. No, there, was was no, there were no Velocity tapings this episode. Oh, yeah, because this episode was taped. That's right. Oh, like, because they, cause they well, you know, because they had the raw set, they taped the uh-huh. same day. Yeah. So commentary talks about how if Super Crazy wins this, it should be a big upset to Randy. And Taz makes the comment: If Super Crazy wins, he can upgrade the Juan Deere to an Escalade. Yo, that's how's a he gonna, wild. How's he gonna bring out an Escalade to the ring though? Uh, you know, JBL comes out in a goddamn fucking limousine, bro. With with horns on it. Fair you telling me you telling me we can't get an Escalade for for super crazy, bro. That would Rango be has a milk that would be truck mediocre crazy speed dial. Yeah, they can make it work. Crazy was doing some stuff though. He was uh he got him drop kick, drop kick, drop kick, drop kick, springboard drop kick, uh, tope cone helo on Randy. Yeah, he did a backwards. He did. He sprung. He did a, a backwards springboard off the second rope into a and drop you know, kick. You know what the fucked up so part good. about it all is? Hmm. The crowd could not give less of a shit. Oh, I was caring. I loved it. Spinning the DDT. Crowd, the crowd was so out of it. It was this, fucked up. This is not the AEW audience. This crowd was nationally motivated. This crowd was nationally motivated in the heart of our nation's capital. Uh, you really hate to see it. I know. They hated to see this. Uh, was it super crazy? Jumped up and spun DDT'd Randy off the top rope. That was crazy. And then crazy also went for a moonsault and missed. Yeah, that was a cool spot. And then he had another yeah. springboard drop kick. 
Randy, uh, Randy, for some reason, goes up to the top rope. Crazy hit. Uh, he, like, fucked up his enziguri. Um, and then uh, he gets pushed off the top. Uh, Randy just fucking kills him with a clothesline and RKO's him. I gotta say one thing, though, is, like, Randy relies on the eye rake too much as, like, a heel maneuver. Yeah. He, he, just he did it. He did it. This match. He did it three times this match. I was like, come on, man. You, you have a solid arsenal. Somebody needs to tell him he can punch balls, dude. Yeah. (laughs) It's okay. Yeah, and that was I gave that three and a half stars. Maybe I'm just so happy to be back that I'm just giving all these big match. No, I think this was actually a good match. I would say that's worthy. I I think the the back like fifth of this match kind of slowed down in like an odd way. I think Super Crazy just started calling spots and Randy like forgot or something. Like after that second like moonsault. Randy was just like, uh, okay, whatever. And then, like, kicks him and hits the RKO and the match is over. But it was still a good match. Uh, in my notes, I have written, Chris Benoit be like, Chris Benoit be like, Chris Benoit be like, Chris Benoit be like, oh, I'm the U.S. champ. Well, well, hold on. Before my, my notes here, it says Chris Benoit promo. Not much else to say. Glorify those concussions while you can, buddy. Before we get to Fair that, they do announce a tag team match. Between Eminem and Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. Three opponent who the outline looks like uh, Finley, but it's not him. Mm. It's outline, fake Finley. Like, look at it. it really looks like him. It, it's zombie it's Finley. question mark, bro. Question mark is the most no- noted man in all of wrestling. It's true. But, uh, yeah, when they got to the Benoit promo package, I lost my mind when I heard, like, the slow start of whatever. I was like, oh, no. And then I think Cole says... Uh, Benoit is a testament of hard work paying off. Yeah, right. And I said, ah. Oof. Well, hold on. Right now, we got JBL having hand surgery just to show me in there. No, no, that, no, no, no. That no. was next. It's penis surgery. Yeah, they did. They did penis surgery on his hand. Yeah. They, oh, they were adding. Yeah, they were taking off his finger to add more girth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were doing dick and ball surgery on I him. Have all our New Vegas fans, if you played Old World Blues, you know hands and fingers. They're just penises. Fair enough. Real. It's so real. <clears throat> but that is basically our announcement for JBL versus Chris Benoit at the big time. Yeah. So much larger than life. I'm surprised yeah. they didn't have Peter Gabriel be the special guest ref for that match. I don't think they could have afforded him. I heard they were looking anywhere at near initially. the state of Chicago. They could have afforded Illinois. the Illinois version of Peter Gabriel, though. Who's also called Peter Gabriel. He's an Iraqi DJ over in Chicago. Yes. <laughs> I should have got his ass. You know, I'd be doing the dip cut over there. Next match, we got Eminem defending their tag team championship against Matt Hardy and his special guest, which is Road Warrior Animal. Ooh, how Ooh. Fuck. Animal looks like shit gotta, here, oh, man. I gotta, I gotta hold up. I mean, we gotta talk about Eminem's entrance as always, right? Oh, of course. It moves. At, it moves at twelve frames a second. It's in like four eighty p. And all the the camera flashes, it made my head hurt. I was tired of it. I didn't care. And then we got Taz yelling about Molina again. How many times can we go crazy about this, Taz? Every yeah, single he, week, <laughs> if possible. Goes up there, and the usual way that Molina gets up there, and Taz is like, hey, "Yo," and it's like, "Taz, what are you like? You're not seeing anything, buddy." Bro, you're on the opposite side of the arena. Chill the fuck out. What was the camera doesn't that- show us anything? Yeah. What did Taz say? really excited about a little bit of that leg. A couple of weeks ago when he said, you put your leg up on the, the hotel. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you put your other some leg crazy over there. shit about And we're like, what? <laughs> Listen to yeah, the other smack up. Park with her. <laughs> up there or something to practice. That's like, t- shut yeah. up, Taz. Taz is a lunatic. That's Taz just likes practicing it. the Taz mission on his wife. Oh. <laughs> So true. But what about his son? <laughs> oh my. He practices it in the strip club. True. That's right. So eventually Matt, Hardy, and Animal get in the ring, whatever. Uh, I, I'm going to make a call out to this woman that was um, in the front row. You know who you are. She's holding a sign that says, Hi, Dad, love Pauline. This girl has like the biggest rack that I think I've ever seen. Hey. <laughs> She was looking pretty respectful. Probably, probably one of the most respectful fans that WWE has ever had in recent years. They failed yeah. to do a search. It should have been her. Is all I'm saying. For real. Vince McMahon, go back in time. 
Just fix Make your mistakes. Right. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> don't look at the dog pussy. Yes. Don't. Oh Just God. Don't do that instead. <laughs> I nearly put that <laughs> in my. Don't look at the dog pussy. Speaking, I nearly put that in my farewell. Speaking of, of big titties, <laughs> animals in the ring, and he's he's very out of shape, and he is very. very he cannot. Bro, he's work. tossing these twinks around. He's throwing them against the wall. He's at a hardcore concert right now, threatening twinks. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he 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 barely looks worse than Matt Hardy though. In 2006, Matt Hardy looks like looks washed, and he's walking with four broken hips. Well, walks like a like a big baby. Well, the bits that his leg is injured or something. He's like my knee. Ah. Uh. He just looks like he needs a Coors Light really bad. Uh, really? Animal, Animal, and Hardy like grabbed Nitro by the leg and backflipped him into the ropes. It was so strange. There was a cool bit here when Animal gets tagged in. He throws Nitro balls first into the ropes. Like he genuinely, I think, grabs him by his like balls. And yeah. Him in the ropes. So I was like, what the fuck? The crowd went crazy when Molina did the fucking head scissor to Animal on the apron. Like she just put her legs all over Animal, and the crowd's like, yeah. Yeah! Should have been me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a, I'm. This match had me um, sleeping at this point, where I'm like, man, I'm tired of this. I'm tired yeah, of Molina. It, it yeah. was kind of tough because, like, again, like the one side is <clears throat> is a uh, Johnny and Joey Mercury, and they are great athletes. Good the other side, the other side is geriatric animal. And uh, depressed Matt Hardy. Depressed Matt Hardy. He goes up. He, he, I think, he goes up to the second rope. He does his like hand sign. He goes oh, to try and like hype the crowd up, and then he hits a uh, single axe handle from the second rope. He's so like, real for okay, that. Like, yeah, dude, I'm excited for that. <laughs> so since you haven't been here on Smack Up, and obviously you didn't listen because you hated SmackDown, but now you love it. Matt Hardy's just fucking like always the underdog. And everyone always talks shit about him being like a shitty like wrestler. So he's just like a guy that no one wants to be around or hang out with. As you can yeah, see by the was, end of that. In case you didn't hear me talking about it before, Vince McMahon took it very personally that Matt Hardy attempted suicide. He really yeah. said this guy is now gonna get the shit end of the stick all the time. Uh, I'm gonna make sure he does it. Yeah, he's so Mercury fuck. I'll go Finish through the this. job next time, pal. I'll go through this pretty quick, because Mercury Mercury throws Nitro an animal and he tries the power slam and he just kinda doesn't get it and just like almost dropped the uh, Nitro on his head. Yeah. Matt hit his twist of fate on Mercury and Nitro pick, breaks up the pin. Animal comes in and pushes Nitro out of the ring. Uh Matt sets up Mercury for the doomsday device. I don't know what the fuck happened there, because Nitro comes in the ring to do like a chop block on Animal. But Animal just jumps before Nitro goes, so Mercury's just sitting up in the air and goes, Oh shit, uh... And so Animal just, like, kind of whiffs the, the clothesline, and Nitro hits... Or, my bad, Hardy whiffs the clothesline, and Animal kind of just falls over. No, 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 was it's the, the other way, way around. Was it the other way? Yeah, my bad, yeah, my bad, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, Matt kind of just falls over after Mercury already got hit, and this just looked really bad. Yeah, the, I'll say the the entire ending of this reminded me of like a AEW TV tag team match where it's like the rules have now been thrown out the window. Nothing matters. I, I no, like I the wouldn't. I like the finish though because Nitro then hit like a pretty big super kick and then uh, right into the snapshot and got the <clears throat> got the pin. I can't lie, I stopped paying attention like near the end of this match and I just started playing with Chief. Uh, yeah, it looked really. Yeah, Animal fine. looked like shit. Yeah, that's fine because after the finish, uh, Animal and. Hardy get into a, a dispute about when to hit the uh, the doomsday device. Says you whatever. go up, but no, you go up, no, yeah. you go up. So that just kind of coalesces, and an animal tries to be the bigger man, but then shoves Hardy. Hardy shoves him, and then animal uh, punches him, and one punch knocks Matt Hardy down. No, he's kicked animal, him in the knee. He kick. Oh yeah, he did kick him in the knee. That's right, right. Yeah, and then he, and then then he, he drags him over yeah. to the turnbuckle and starts slamming that it, shit. Yeah. Yeah, Animal turns heel. Uh, he's very angry because he, uh, he's supremely out of shape. <clears throat> Matt's just depressed. He's like, I'm the only depressed person here. Fuck you. This is this is my exact notes right here. Animal started brutal brutalizing the injured knee of the depressed millennial Matt Hardy because he messed up his move. Somebody get this man a Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> Matt so, Hardy, original Hangman Adam Page. 
it, we got we got the Subway big time moment. The hot and it's, sponsored by Subway, the hot and fresh dinner of WrestleMania. It's Undertaker beating Psycho Sid at WrestleMania 13. Undertaker and Sid, more like mid. Yeah, that wasn't a very good match, and they had that. That's a terrible moment, dude. Why are we still trying to get Sid over in the year of our Lord 2006? <laughs> we have nobody liked Sid when it was at that time when the match. Why happened. me? Why I me? To, Why me? I was like, there's no way this happened. There's no yeah. way. And I looked it up, and I'm like, oh my god. It's on the same crazy. show as Bret Hart versus Stone Cold. <laughs> and Bret Hart's before, going in the Hall of Fame. To. Bret Hart's going in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, exactly. He's going into the Hall of Fame this year, bro. And they they put that one on. Like, yeah, this is one of the best moments. Like, fuck you, dude. Somebody tell Vince to just go get a lot of plastic surgery and go a mustache already, bro. I'm tired. I think Mr. John Subway was was a real psycho Sid mark. And he said, if I'm going to give you a lot of money, Vince... You better feature a Psycho Sid WrestleMania like, uh, big time meet moment. Like how in like Monday or WCW fucking whatever, uh, the fucking N64 game, they just included Raven on the cover because one of the guys working on the game was a big Raven fan, even though like he did nothing in WCW at that time. Oh, <laughs> dude, I love that game. And uh, I think it was WCW NWO. Yeah, yep. Yep. Immediately after that, they show uh, Finley and Lashley coming up next. Uh, immediately after that, the smack of the smack of the night brought to us by AutoZone. AutoZone recap. So the crazy thing about that, they use Umaga's future theme song. Is that really? Yeah, that's Umaga's theme just playing in the background, going da 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 da. I'm like, is he coming out? Like Umaga's here? No, it's just they're showing off fucking the smack of the night. Thank you, AutoZone. The smack of the night is a uh, JBL versus Lashley from two weeks ago. Which pretty much starts the JB or uh, the Lashley versus Finley feud. Uh, then they yeah. to go into a promo package for the Hall of Fame. I cannot wait to watch that with you guys. <laughs> Let's go, Mean Gene. Let's go. Yeah, he he really deserves it. Mean Gene is, 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 is. I don't look. Something bad could come out tomorrow. Maybe it's something that already came out. I don't know anything about Mean Gene, but he just seems like a sweet dude. If you want to tell me something bad happened, you can go right ahead. I mean, well, we'll simply he, ignore he it. did pass yeah. away, so, I mean, if we have uh, anything come out, we'll, we'll have to definitely get on him for that. <laughs> I yeah, need, we'll on the up. soundboard, I need Mean Gene saying, <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 uh, the only part of that that really, where I was like, yeah, let's go, fuck it, was Coco Beware showing up. Like, yeah, let's give Coco <laughs> Beware the spotlight for a moment here. Those couple cents residual check are going to hit so different. He needs it, surely. His bird. And, and the Hulkster is... is inducting Mean Gene. Oh my God! Watching this this uh, Hall of Fame with you guys is gonna be like how I watch every Hall of Fame. I just get drunk <laughs> in a drunken <laughs> stupor. Yeah, that's how Bro, we roll. The sidebar completely. But when I was in, in uh, New Orleans, I forget who was fucking inducted that year, but it was a guy, and he just kept talking. He just kept going. His stories were key? endless. No, no, that was like the year prior. Oh. But he was like a, I want to say he was like a hacksaw Jim Duggan type. You know what gets anyway. me drunk? This Bobby Lashley Finley match. This was fun. I I was just like, oh, Bobby Lashley first Finley, and then Finley just would not stop. He's like, I'm not getting rid of this shillelagh. Fuck you, ref. And then Lashley yeah, starts f- beating the shit out of him. Yeah, they don't <laughs> just, really have a match. They just beat the fuck out of each other. I have in my notes, when is this match going to end in a DQ? <laughs> Immediately. Yeah, that's the answer. It was like right <laughs> after I wrote that in my notes that they that Finley threw the chairs in the ring. Yeah, they were uh, they were just slamming fists into each other. Slamming, slamming cocks, slamming bodies. Yeah, it was it very was awesome. Slam dancing. Finley has the shillelagh for like the whole time. and then But I put that Bob is so strong. He punches his face and knocks it out of his hands. Yeah. And then when Finley retreats, he'll throw the chairs in. And they get ready for that, like, chair duel. Bobby's so strong, he smacks it out. He hits Finley's chair, slams it out of uh, his hands, and Bobby's still got it, roaring for another one. I think Finley in that moment was genuinely like, fuck. (laughs) Oh, shit, this guy's real. Uh, if you guys like go and watch this episode to our audience, if you watch this episode, like when they bash chairs together, like Finley's goes like flying out of his hands, and Finley's like clearly like, oh god, oh he's, he's taken aback, like that that definitely hurt his hands a lot. Yeah, 
yeah, security tried to break these these boys up, but they had enough juice in them to not because Lashley spears the shit out of Finley, and you're like, damn, that's a good segment. And then Finley gets on the apron and jumps onto Lashley and security, knocking everyone over. And Finley's like, yeah, ah, he, he, he. and like this goes on for a while, and eventually, like there's like twelve people out here trying to like, first it's the refs, fighting. and then it's security, and then it's more security, and they just still won't stop going. Yeah. Uh, I love it. It's okay, because that brawl was sponsored by the movie Jarhead. <laughs> was it? Yes, well, that I was one of the things when they, when they came back from commercial. It was like it was like some car insurance, and then uh, Jarhead, starring uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. And, and Tobey Maguire. Yeah, that's the one. Unrelated to, to what SmackDown sponsored by today, but I had a Peacock ad for the Stouffer's Meaty Cheesy. <laughs> Hold on, can wow. we talk about the meaty cheesy? Can we please talk about the meaty cheesy? I kept getting peacock ads that were baiting me into like uh like uh, what's the word? Um engaging. Like they there were ones that had like surveys or like trivia that's like this is the state that produces the most pumpkin pies during the holidays or some shit. Which Thank state? God I don't have those. Which was the state? I don't fucking know, dude. Why would they tell you that? I think I didn't click either way. I need to know now. <laughs> Which state does I'm just gonna say does the most pumpkin pie? Oh my god. Who does the most pumpkin pie? Illinois? Wait, we're going back. CM Punk. Guys, oh come on, come on. Oh, shit. It, it ends. Hey, oh, shit. We, this fire burns always. Oh, we're gonna get him soon. I'll cry. He's coming, and you're gonna hate it. Well, we're not getting. I can't him wait right now. But you're gonna get a crystal uh, recap. Yeah. Speaking of coming, <laughs> coming soon. Oh, crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Gears of War one. Yes, coming soon. Hey, that's that's for all you classic fans out there. Let us the re- know. The real heads know. Whenever we yeah. start our 360 wheel content, I'm gonna have to be forced to play Gears One with whoever gets it. Whoever whoever knows what that means. Am I right? Listen, moving back to Crystal, Crystal What's and Jillian. What a woman. This is why. This is why Raw can't not compete. Raw just it doesn't have enough sexism in it, and they're very sexist. But there's Smackdown. a lot. As as a transplant, there is a lot of sexism in Raw, and it's but it's still not enough. I don't know because Crystal wants to be out here to 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 do this, uh, for whatever whatever is motivating her to do that. She wants to do this, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and how even... dare Jillian interrupt her? What's right. Jillian's beef, bro? It's because uh, they're... they're the only other woman on the roster. <laughs> Yeah, is she, much. Is, she, is she a bad enough dude, I guess? No. Charmel oh, doesn't have yeah. time for these games, though. Yeah. Charmel wouldn't want to engage, bro. What'd you guys think about Paul Birchall as a player? I love He's Paul Birchall. I He's... didn't think his knife would actually be sharp because he's back there and, and Willie Riggs. Is is trying one last time to plead with him. He said, Paul, you're going to make a fool out of yourself. You buccaneer! However, he fucking says it. He's like, please don't. And then he gra- and then fucking Paul grabs him by the tie and cuts his fucking tie. I didn't think that knife was actually sharp. And Regal like yells, "Are you bloody mad? Are you bloody mad?" No, this is I can't tight. wait for this match. I can't. <laughs> Next week, Next William week. Regal versus Paul Virtual. Get ready, be tight. folks. What is the genuine inspiration for this bit? Because like, I what thought do you mean? It was like Caribbean. I think it has to be Pirates of the Caribbean. But Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one came out like three years before this. WWE is always three years behind any trends. Look oh. at the Shockmaster, bro. Shockmaster. Well, like the the bit. Well, that's like the outside influence. The bit is that Paul Birchall discovered that some one of his ancestors was a pirate or some shit. And Paul Birchall discovered piracy and he started downloading a bunch of porn games from the pirate bit. Yeah, he downloaded <laughs> the car. Literally. <laughs> You wouldn't download that car. You know what's funny about that? I know I don't he know if anyone knows to buy them on Steam. that commercial that says you wouldn't download a car. You wouldn't download that has pirated music, as I, <laughs> so very good stuff. You wouldn't pirate the song to use in a commercial, would you? Maybe, perhaps. You know who else is a pirate? Kurt Angle, because he's coming for Undertaker's booty. So true. And that World Heavyweight Real. Championship match. 
The um, rematch from No the Way rematch. Out. The, uh, the, this this the one's free. What I'm talking about. I really need to start this, this off. This one's free for the plebs now. I really, they, I, they already got the banger on. Now this is the leftovers. I have one thing to say before I let you all unpack this. Is that Taz said Major League Soup Bones. What? He yelled Major League Soup Bones when Undertaker was punching Angle. And I'll let you guys un- unpack this match. Right. <laughs> Clearly, this is a reference to CM Punk, guys. His <laughs> thing with this match is I knew it was going to be a TV uh, Undertaker main event. We need like 15 minutes to get to the ring. No, I timed it. Hold on. No, I timed Two it. Two minutes and 50 seconds. Three. Mi- it was three minutes and five seconds. Whoa. My timer was off. And there was sitting like in his couch, just just like in it, not on it. He was just like snugged in there, drinking a beer, going, "Oh man, how long is the Undertaker coming out?" It's for? so tough. Where it's so I? tough, dude. It's, oh listen, my! Listen, I'll give him this. Undertaker, for what it's worth, he does suck, but like he put on a good match. Like this time, he threw I, his whole under bussy into it, bro. I I have to believe that at No Way Out backstage and tonight, Kurt Angle approached the Undertaker with with vicious intent and said, "If you don't work tonight, one of us are gonna break our necks, and I yeah, don't I care think, which." I think Kurt Jensen, <laughs> said, "I will kill you if you don't fucking give it your all in this match." I will. I, com- I completely believe that there were threats involved. Kurt Angle looks like a, a madman. And he's just staring straight at him. He's like 30 Percocet out of his mind. This man cannot feel his neck at all. He doesn't need to. Like, oh, okay, I'm not going to fuck with you. I'll get you Hennessy tonight. That sounds good. Hennessy perks on you, me. Perks. Perks. Yeah, no. Kurt Angle definitely threatened The Undertaker and said, you will fucking work at me. You better work, bitch. Yeah. Well, he brought it. I mean, this was this was awesome. I guess for all intents and purposes, it was a good match, but they were pretty much hitting the beats of the No Way Out match because a lot of this was the same. A lot of reversals. You know, these guys these guys know each other. These two they know guys how to know get each other, each other so well. They know how to get each other. Um, um, but I wasn't expecting Undertaker to immediately go for the last ride. Kurt was trying to counter out of it, so Undertaker dropped him nut first onto the top rope. <laughs> yeah. <he's- laughs> <laughs> You know, like the the real the real thing about this match is like this is truly like a testament to the 2006 era where, like, this was a big match. They know people. There's like a, a large contingency of their viewers that are children, and their parents won't buy the pay per view for them. So we need a rerun of the match the next night, just a little different. Like it was a good. Like, if you watch like the the No Way Out match, like I mean, it's it's just a better version of this. But mm-hmm. like, if you were watching this in 2006 and your parents weren't spending fifty dollars on a pay per view, this is it. A fucking good match for what? Banger. It yeah, you're getting gold right here. Well, I have some good parts about this match that I thought like was insane. Like, I don't know if they, I don't remember if they did on No Way Out, but like that triangle choke reverse and like that whole sequence of him just like triangle choking and then angle flipping over, and then uh, Taker still has the triangle choke on. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Undertaker drops a leg drop on the angle, then Angle just kind of grabs him and flips him over into an ankle lock. Oh, what yeah. Oh, up? yeah. He, he grabbed it again. Yeah. I, again, still sitting, the, the, hitting the similar beats to the No Way Out match, but um, still, like, just, like, calling on that spot. It just looked really, like, great. Uh, just so, like, how powerful and how elite of a wrestler Kurt is. Earlier in the match, Taker flipped Angle over on the apron and just leg dropped his neck, and I was like, "Holy oh, that was shit!" Fucking... That that oh, that, had, that uh, added at least two inches. Yeah. To what? Kurt's neck. Oh my yeah, bad. He, I thought you were talking he, about he, me. He spread that thing out. Uh, yeah. He also uh, <laughs> he got a dragon sleeper from Taker, and I love the oh. dragon sleeper. I couldn't believe. It. I'm like, "What are you doing?" That was awesome. I actually have dragon a sleepers here. are grotesque, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, especially this one because Undertaker being tall and Kurt being short, putting a uh, face up dragon sleeper. Uh, I wrote here that Kurt could have, or, or Undertaker could definitely have snapped Kurt's calcified neck. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, think he could have. I don't think, I think he could have. I think he could have. Just because of how calcified that neck is. Again, like that, th- that shit is too thick. Kurt also tried a moonsault and just completely dropped on his neck. Oh. <laughs> 
I'm like, happens. Was that the one? And he still wrestles for another like five years after this. It's insane. But unfortunately, what brings it back from being as good as No Way Out is that Mark Henry comes out and he said, "What if it was me in this match?" But you know what? Let me interrupt. That that is like a, that is the end of a TV main event. Fair you know, enough. Like yeah. That is that's and the maximum you're going to get out of it. It's set up for more, right? It that's was yeah. a good end. It was I, at least a fun DQ. I yeah. thought it might have gone the distance because they they repeat the um, uh, triangle choke and then Kurt flipping over to try and steal a pin, but um, but you Undertaker learned? sort of reels him back in and lets go of the choke to avoid it. And I thought they were gonna because pretty much most of the match was was a repeat, um, but I thought that was gonna kind of bring us into a uh, like a like a new original stuff. Um, and they they do actually go back and forth. Uh, with the uh, tombstone pile driver, but Undertaker gets it back and hits it, hits a devastating uh, pile driver on Kurt and his now reshortened neck. Yep. Um, and then Mark Henry does wonder if that was if that would be him or whatever. What if that was me? What if that, what was, if that was me? <laughs> yeah. But right. still, even then, the, the show didn't stop there because uh, Kurt was Kurt was dead. Mark, Mark was done with Kurt. He he ravaged Taker on the outside uh, because it was him, uh, and then slammed him through the announce table off of the Spanish announce table. Yeah, he just Everybody did a running splash. Crazy. Yeah, I, I lost it. Yeah, and you knew. So they mentioned it's a big fight field because they have the Spanish announce table there, and I was like, they're gonna use that. Someone's gonna get. Someone's gonna happen here. There's and... literally no reason to have two announce tables otherwise, right? Nope. And but it all paid off. I think this was probably like one of the most consistently good episodes of SmackDown this year so far, which is kind of crazy. And there wasn't a lot of promos. I think that's because like how taped it was. The wrestling was good quality, honestly. You know? They just had a lot of good matches, except for you know the tag match. Were there any promos other than the pre the pre film promo packages? Just just the Regal Birchall like backstage. I think that was really it. There was no like. No, not even not even Teddy was in this episode. This but yeah, the twenty twenty AEW episode, and that there's just like wrestling and not like dumb shit happening. But there's also dumb shit happening. But it's like quick. But it leads to wrestling. But it leads to wrestling. Overall, probably one of the best episodes of SmackDown. I think we watched. And overall, it leads us into next week's SmackDown, which is very horny. Fair banger. Horny. It really, this really was the perfect like one-two punch. <laughs> like I'm here on SmackDown now, so like I kind of got thrown into it, and these two episodes really go consecutively with each other. So it almost as if they were meant to be viewed one after mm, another. Interesting. Mm. If, if only this were a weekly episodic television show. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Do we All have right, anything everybody. else to talk about this episode? No, no, no. This has been smack up. We've no. been smacked yeah. up. I love y'all. Oh, oh actually, I do have something to say for this episode. Guys, we got merch now. We got oh, raw yeah. down smack up merch. Who who wants to buy some smack up shirts? Smack yeah, up bucket hat? Seat. Smack up tapestry? Smack up anything. Just put the logo on. If you get a little sticker, put it on stuff. I'll, uh, I'll leave the description. Links in the description. Links in the, Links description. In the, Links in the YouTube. Watch I, on YouTube. Yeah. Watch on SmackDown. Call to action. I appreciate everybody that listens, especially this far. Are you kidding me? That's nuts. Mwah. We'll see you all next time on SmackUp, which is going to be we're going to record it like right now. Uh, ah! SmackUp.